Terry Jones, who was my mentor, understood that the very short-lived isotopes were extremely useful. Firstly, because you could have them come into the brain and be washed out of the brain, but because of their short half-life, they also decayed from the brain. So you could set up steady states where what was coming in and what was leaving out into the veins and as radioactive decay established an equilibrium. And that equilibrium was dependent on the input. And the input was, of course, cerebral blood flow. And if you could do that regionally, you could look at the regional amount of cerebral blood flow. And because neural activity was linked to local perfusion, local cerebral blood flow essentially told you what neural activity there was. And the second advantage of oxygen-15 was that it was an isotope of the, of the atom that was actually there, so it would not be changing anything going on in the brain. So Lassen and Ingvar had done all the previous work on very long-lived isotopes, but what they were battling against was the inability to actually measure the amount of isotope locally in the brain. So what the, the whole, the whole uh, era of, of tomography brought was the ability to measure locally in the brain, and then what positron tomography brought was because of the way these positron emitters decayed, sending out two um, photons which were detected on either side by two um, uh, receptors which were simultaneously detecting so you could isolate where the thing came from. You could also correct for the attenuation of these photons as they went through the tissue and get an absolute value of the concentration of the isotope in each part of the brain. Now that then allowed you to transform that into an absolute measure of cerebral blood flow, mils per 100 mils of brain per minute. And that, that quantitation is still by far and away the greatest advantage of positron tomography. Now when we were interested in looking at brain energetics, it was blood flow, it was oxygen consumption, and it was glucose consumption. Those were the three issues. Oxygen-15 allowed us to make measures in five minutes initially. A bit shorter later on, Raikel developed a very rapid technique where there were certain other assumptions involved which we might talk about later. But they allowed repetitions because the amount of radioactivity given per shot was much less than with the fluorine-18 FDG. And so you could do up to six, perhaps even 12 repetitions. So that gave you a sort of dynamic perspective. And uh, oxygen consumption, well, that came from the fractional oxygen extraction, which involved breathing uh, oxygen instead of breathing carbon dioxide or uh, injecting it as a nice, uh, um, labelled with oxygen-15. And that was, uh, that was really common to everyone. So those were the, the three things that we had available. And people tailored questions and methods of measurement to each other. And... Those various techniques evolved over the early 80s. Uh, 